guys, have you ever wondered what it's like to off-road a Unimog four-wheel drive semi-truck, right? It's pretty close, yeah. Yeah, uh, in Moab. Well, wonder no more because we're going to do it. This is Jay Couch. And you have um, Couch off-road engineering, right? That's right, yep. So and you build rigs like this and also what, G-Wagons? We do the G-Wagons as well. Our, our mainstay is kind of the, the Unimog. It's, it's kind of the king of the castle for the big rigs, so it's just an easy platform to build on. All right, cool. So we're right in front of Hell's Revenge. Do you say we should try some? Yeah, Hell's Revenge, my most hated trail of Moab because of all the uh, cliffhanger stuff. Yes, let's do it. Sounds like fun. <laughs> in the giant rig. Let's, let's go. Let's go. I interrupt this video for this week's TFL Bids bargain. We sell a lot of cool trucks and off road SUVs at the site, and this week it's another gem. It's a 2004 Jeep Wrangler LJ. It's basically a long wheelbase TJ, which is highly desirable. This one has under 85,000 miles, has a lot of cool custom touches, including bumpers, wheels, and tires, and exhaust system. And Nathan actually saw this Jeep. He gives us a personal walk around of it to show us the exact condition. So use the link in the description below, check it out. And don't forget, you can use the submit button to also submit your truck or SUV for sale. And it will go to a good home with a like-minded enthusiast. This guy, yeah. it's uh, obviously it's a Unimog. This is a, a mid 90s machine. Uh, we can only bring him in up to so many years old. But what we do okay. is we take a, an older series truck and completely rebuild everything. What's cool with this machine is um, a little extra lo longer than most. Uh, the horsepower, instead of being 150 horse, is 320. We got about 800 foot pounds of torque out of it. No computer controlled anything. Everything is old school. This engine will literally melt. It'll run, if it's a 100 degree day or 97 degrees, it'll run. You stuff sticks of margarine in the fuel tank, it'll run on it. So the engine is kind of right below you right now? Yes, yeah, so the in engine's the actually sitting right up in front here. So this will be the back of the motor, and then the coolers are actually offset to one side so you can access the front of the engine, okay. all the belts. Um, this has a, we're actually prototyping an overdrive on it. This is kind of codger together button here. So that gives me a selectable 29% overdrive without declutching. Okay. So we're testing it out on the MOG. It's a, it's a system that's been around for a while, but we're trying to see if it'll handle the big truck. But oh. what's neat is you've got your main eight speed shifter here. Then this little shifter here engages what we call a working gear group. It's a planetary reduction that brings first gear from a little under 100 to 1 to 680 to 1 first gear. Oh my God. And that's a factory option. And okay. then I have another one for that spot if I want to put it yeah. in that brings it up to 3,800 and something to 1. It multiplies it again. All gears are reversible. So if you have the balls to hold it straight enough, you can do 70 miles an hour in reverse. Oh wow. I've only done 50 and it's dicey, trust me. So uh, what's nice is if you're rocking up and down something, it's forward, reverse, forward, reverse, and it's synchronized. So okay. if you're in a mud hole or if you're pushing snow, these are often work machines, yeah. so it works good for that. You've got uh, some other goodies we do is we added a hydraulic system, which is often available on these trucks, but this one didn't come with it. So the hydraulics for the recovery winches, winch right now one, but there'll be a second one in the rear. Uh, central tire inflation, which is this guy through here. If I turn the key on, yeah. this will inflate both now. I inflate both or the, or deflate uh, the front, the rear, or together. Okay. And then I got a beep telling me that I'm uh, rapidly losing air. Let me shut that guy off. And uh, pretty slick. Four wheel drive. This is two. There's four. There's both factory front and rear diff locks. And that's pneumatically engaged, so no electronics to fail, which is really trick. It's kind of interesting. People are always saying, oh, how do you, let's isolate just to have a rear locker. And doing this for 30 years now, with the MOG, you can't tell if you're picking up a wheel or whatnot. It's such a big machine. It's very, very capable. You just don't know if you're in a dicey situation. So honestly, you leave it in four-wheel drive, diffs open. As soon as it stops moving forward, you're like, oh, I might be picking up wheels. Lock them. Once you get through the nasty section, you unlock them again, you're good to go. It also takes some of the strain off the drivetrain. Because face it, this truck is 13,800 pounds as we sit right now with some camping gear in it. Yeah. So pretty, pretty heavy. So it's just it's better to keep that way. A nice thing is too, 19 inches of diff clearance really helps. Wow. How many gear speeds? I mean, so we are, let's think 32 <laughs> speeds, 30, 32, no. all reversible. What? I, unbelievable. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, let's get going, dude. Cool. It's on man. Park brake, almost like a semi truck. 
So we're going to start deflating both of them right now. You have a reverse camera, so. I do. The mirror, actually, the mirrors are a little easier. A little better up perspective, I think. So once we get up on this, I'll put it in working gear and I just leave it in the low range set. So how's the visibility? I mean, this is amazing it's from really up here. Good. It's really good. Except for when you're coming up over a cliff, it gets pretty dicey. So we're gonna go ahead and put in the working gear group. Stop the CTIS. So now, just to give you an idea, that's first gear. But so we're not moving, barely. You can kind of move it, so okay. yeah. So yeah, they're gear low. Okay. They're pretty impressive. So we'll just jump over into fourth gear, actually, which is actually sixth. And then I'll put it into four as soon as we get off onto this curve. Being this big, you just take things slower. And when you're up this high, it's an inverted pendulum effect. So any little bump kind of swings you around. Ah, cliff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with 32 speeds, I mean, you can do whatever speed you want, That's right? Right, yep. So this one, uh, I haven't maxed it out. I get to 80 miles an hour and it just feels unnatural at that speed. So I usually cruise, it's 65 to 70, 75. So it's kind of cool. You wouldn't think this would work, but uh, once we get on the steeper part, I'll hit the exhaust brake. You yeah. I actually use the exhaust brake a lot, just because it's a little uh, less invasive on the, the binders. Uh -huh. So actually we'll just, you step on it with your heel and it actually brings you down softly instead of when you step on the pedals, a little more aggressive and you can tend to slip a tire. Uh huh. Not as big of a deal on a 5,000 pound or under truck, but 13 plus, it's a big difference. I gotcha. So you build these for customers. Is that your yeah. main part? Yep, that is our main yeah. deal. Unfortunately, I got a really bad habit of building them for myself. <laughs> so I probably have about 20 of these that are my personal tr personal rigs. Yeah. Um, but our clientele is, um, it takes a long time to build one of these out, especially as an expedition truck. So I have some really phenomenal customers, very patient as well. And um, we built, most of our guys nowadays are for kind of traveling the world. Um, because this is truly a global, you know, expedition truck. This yeah. is really what you use for going across Africa, uh, Namibia, South America, Russia. Uh, just because you can fix it with your basic tools. It has more off-road capability than out of out of the box than really any medium class vehicle out there or really anything for its size. So it's nice to have a rig that you're only at about 50% of its off-road capability uh, when you're traveling. We're gonna let some Wranglers come around us and then we'll see this big rig flexing right here at Hell's Revenge. It doesn't get much better than this. So that was a little warm up. And now we're gonna hit some bigger kind of boulders here. Thank you. And uh, see this Unimog Flex, which is a really amazing.
I know that Jeep will go pretty much anywhere, but I'm a little bit worried about the other two. So I'm gonna pull out my Onyx off-road map to figure out what the terrain coming up is like so we know that the T-Rex and the Raptor can do it. Of course, I'm being facetious, but Onyx off-road is really cool because we have really detailed satellite and topographical maps, and you can download the map to your phone because out here, there's not a lot of anything, especially no service. So, let's keep on going. I think the trucks will be fine, but we'll have to wait and see. I wanted to kind of turn around because we showed you a few things, but Jay says he wants to climb another big obstacle. Twist my arm. There's another big rig. Woo, whoop. This is about three to four feet ledge right there. Those tires are 46s, almost four feet tall. And it just kind of has enough torque just to kind of climb over this. That's pretty awesome. All right, here he goes. I would never attempt it in a Jeep. But 13,000 pound truck, yikes. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I mean, the clearance says the approach departure angle and ground clearance on this truck is insane. Um, it's unbelievable. All right, let's get going a little bit more. The nice thing is you can do everything that we just did with a small house on the back, tiny, tiny house, but still yeah. full-time living. The, what makes it possible is the chassis on this thing is extremely flexible, almost more flexible than anything else out there. But what makes that work is the, the cab and the subframe that carries the body on the back is on a diamond type structure, either be a three point or a four point diamond. It allows that frame to twist up to, I get about maximum 21 degrees of frame twist on this vehicle. Whoa. And it doesn't bind or transmit any torsional forces to either the monocoque structures, be it the body, the cab of the truck, or the uh, camper. So if you just mount a camper box, like on a, uh, a Ford or a Dodge platform, and you bolt it in the frame, the frame is twisting, but the box is trying to keep it from twisting. So you things, just like when you are tweaked out on a pickup truck, you try to shut the tailgate, it doesn't close, or your doors don't. These machines, the bodies float on top of them and allow the frame to do all the flexing and whatnot. And that just promotes longer life of the chassis, your carrying components, etc., and the off-road mobility is increased. So without the camper body on the back, how much is a rig like this, approximately? So this one built out, I just looked it up, we're at about 385,000 right now. Okay. Um, boxes could depend, they could be anywhere from, a turnkey box is never gonna be less than 100 grand. Uh, nice ones, a little under 300 probably. So, you know, by the time everything's said and done, you're a little under 600,000, maybe a little over. 
but uh, what you get is pretty phenomenal. And we actually build these older guys. If I'm traveling the globe and just say I'm able to buy a brand new Unimog, we actually prefer the older ones simply because there's no computer control anything. It's old school, all that. And honestly, building one of these older series and rebuilding them to the spec that uh, we do is almost more expensive than a newer one. But we also have more horsepower, we have more speed, we have better long-term reliability, rebuildability, all that. Cool, but if you if I don't have 400K right now to spend, you also built some G-Wagons and also Suzuki's? Oh yeah, Samurais, yeah. Man, that's my favorite. People come to my shop and they see these Samurais, what are these things? I'm like, do not knock the Samurai. Those okay. are my favorite. Um, so the Mogs actually could be down to that $75,000 mark, uh -huh. and that's still a good, reliable, solid unit that's relatively fast. The G-Wagons are a little overpriced for what they are, but they're very capable machines. They're very durable, yeah. um, and they get a little pricey. Samurai, you know, that's the king of the field right there. The poor man's build, but they're fun. I love driving my Samurais. We stretch them, we do this, we do that, but you got to go motorcycle camping when you're in a Suzuki as opposed to and honestly, that's how it started. I'm an old mountain bike racer. I used to run Suzuki's back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, driving from here out to Lake Tahoe. I couldn't carry enough stuff. So then I ended up getting a bunch of Unimogs, so. <laughs> cool. So how can people find you? So it's, it's easy. It's couchoffroad.com. Company's called Couch Offroad Engineering. So just look up couchoffroad.com. You'll find us. So, so are people turned off by the manual transmission sometimes? You know, I get, I'll get a call from a customer that's looking for an automatic gearbox. And the reality is, so the only time a manual's a problem if you can't drive, other than not being able to drive one, yeah. is if you're not geared low enough. And the MOGs are completely, that's, that's, out of, that's no problem at yeah. all. And to be honest with you, if you're out in the middle of Namibia and an automatic transmission, when it lets go, it lets go all at once. There's usually not a lot of warning. At least with this, I could lose one gear and keep skipping over it. Yeah. But on top of that too, there's a strange deal about the mechanical motion of a constant connection to the engine with that drive. So on an automatic, when you, you idle up to a, a rock or a bump and it kind of stops for a minute uh -huh. and then the torque converter loads up and brings you over it, you lose that carrying momentum forward. Where with a constant drive shaft running through there, it'll hit but that motor loads up and then brings you right over so you carry a more consistent momentum path over all your obstacles. And that's okay. one of the things that makes these things so capable. So by the time, if you can't drive a, a manual transmission and you want to travel the globe, this is probably, you know. Learn. Yeah, you need to learn because yeah. you're going to be in a situation where you're, you're going to have to drive an old Land Rover to save your life or something or who knows. So that's, that's usually the answer to it. And most people by the time, I mean, my girlfriend drives all these trucks. Uh, I put other customers in it and they're like, wow, it's surprisingly easy. You just, once you get over the size and used to it, it's, it's an, you don't have to feather the clutch. You just let the clutch out yeah. and it, it drives, it does it for Cause there's you. so much gearing behind it, right? So the engine's a thousand pounds. The flywheel, clutch, and crankshaft is 360 pounds of moving okay. mass. Okay. So it just, it doesn't die very easy. So now, now we're back on the cliff space. Uh, my least favorite. So just follow the arrows. We're fine. And, and look I forward. Look, only look forward. <laughs> Is this truck about eight feet wide or what? Uh, seven and a half, I think. Okay, so it's not too bad. Other, maybe. <laughs> not too bad. Too bad. Oh, dude, you could do it in your sleep. <laughs> yeah. Right? If I drove out here enough, I could, but I'll tell you what, it always uh, gets me off guard whenever I well, come into the entrance of well, the trail. Well, when driving a 13,000 pound rig on a cliff face, if you're not bothered by it, you're probably not human, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you probably shouldn't be driving because yeah. uh, you don't know the danger that you're uh, imposing to the earth when you're going to hit it. And yourself. And yourself, <laughs> yeah. You probably won't survive it if you go off this. <laughs> Well, now we're staring at the ground. Yes, we are. <laughs> oh, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely a different animal. It's like, I, I compare it, people ask what it's like riding off-road in one of these. It's like riding a drunk elephant. Boom, 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 boom. But it does it all day, every day. Awesome, Jay, well, thank you for, uh, taking me for a ride. Oh, very good. We're good to have you guys out here, man. Perfect timing. So we'll see you in Denver hopefully soon. Yeah, heck yeah. You got to come out to the couch pound. We'll uh, okay. 
go on a, a controlled course testing proving ground and have a lot of fun. All right, dude, we'll see you next time. <laughs> cool.